In the previous tutorial, we talked about marking the beats and then bringing in the images to snap to the beats. Today we're going to talk more about timing and how to pin the music. Here we have the background music track that we dragged in from iTunes and put in the project. Now we click on the tiny gear icon in the lower left of the music track and then we select click trimmer. The tracked and waveform appears. We want the music to start with the appearance of the first slide. So we want to see when the music starts in relationship to when the track starts. It's hard to tell here, so we have to expand the waveform. Go to the lower right of the window and move the slider all the way to the left so each frame is a half a second. Now the waveform is spread out and we can see there's a space between the start of the track and the start of the music. It's not very much in this one, but we want our music and our first slide to coincide. Some tracks, especially homemade ones, there's a considerable gap between the start of the music and the start of the track. Now we we'll use the clip trimmer. We just click and drag the yellow start line to the right so that it is at the start of the waveform. We can check the accuracy by skimming. Let's talk about the difference between skimming and playing. Skimming means just moving the cursor without dragging across the clip. It's an unusual phenomenon with uh, computers because usually you can't do anything with a cursor unless you click it or double click it or drag it. But in this case, just bringing the cursor over the track allows us to skim. Skimming lets you really slow the track down so that you can be precise and see where the sound is. Once you get the mouse to where you want it, just tap the space bar and playback will begin at the precise position of the mouse. Now we have the clip trimmed to the start of the music. We'll tap out the beats and bring in the images using the techniques that were described in the previous tutorial and in the last three classes. The music I've used is a very, very fast waltz. It's not your typical music of a slideshow. However, I'm using it to demonstrate uh, the use of transitions uh, later in the uh, tutorial. Also, I've tapped out only the very long instrumental notes. Uh, if I tapped out every uh, first beat, the slides would be changing at one a second. Here's the result of bringing in the slides into the music. Note that the background music starts with the first image and that the next image comes in at the start of the uh, marked beat. And the beats consecutively line up with each slide. Now, suppose we want to, we decide we want to put a title in before the first uh, image. Uh, we select the title icon below the viewer. For this example, we'll select the centered title and drag it to the left of the first image. Now look what happened. The music floated over to the left to start with the title. It doesn't start anymore with the first uh, image of the dog and notice that all the beats are off. It does this because the background music that was initially put into the project comes in as a floating track and it always floats to the start of the project. The more slides I keep adding uh, at the beginning of the project, the more the music will keep floating to the left. I use Apple Z to step back a step and restore the project to the way it was before I brought in the uh, title. Now before we can uh, pin the music to the first slide, we need to disable temporarily the snap to the beats. We can always come back later in the project and re-enable snap to the beats. To get to the snap to the beats function, it's inside the view menu. 
Now we select Snap to the Beats to uncheck the mark in front of Snap to the Beats so we can disable it. Now to pin the music, we select the music track. Be careful to select only the track and none of the uh, images. We click and we drag the track to the left. Actually, there's no place to drag it to the left, but iMovie senses that we're trying to move it, and it turns it to purple. The original green track now becomes purple, and there's a little push pin at the beginning of the track to show that it's pinned to that location. If we accidentally had pushed it to the right, no problem, just slide it back to the left. Now when we add a title to the pinned music, the title goes in and the music stays pinned to the first slide and all the subsequent slides are synchronized with the beat. Now I want to talk about transitions. Almost all the transitions in iMovie shorten the duration of the clip. Now suppose we want to get the red curtain to fade to black because we don't like the red curtain coming right into the dog. So if we put a fade to black transition after the curtain, notice that all the clips are not synchronized with the beat. Now I need to restore the project back to the original condition with the title, no transition, and the beat synchronized. So I select the transition and delete it. But because there was a change in timing with the first slide, the beats are off a little bit. So one easy way to do it is just go up to the uh, music track, select only the music track, and just slide it to the left so that the beats line up with the uh, change of the slides. Okay, now we've got the way it was Everything's all aligned. Now I'm going to show you an easy way that you can add transitions before the first slide without changing the timing. Now here comes the magic. What we'll do is we'll just add a black title in front of the first slide. So here we have two titles, the red curtain and the black background. We discard the title above the black, since we already have a title over the red curtain. And now we have uh, two frames plus one title. And we'll just put a transition in between the red curtain and the black frame. And so any shortening will be done on the black curtain and not on the dog and not on the beats. And since we've got a black uh, slide there, we'll use a cross dissolve. So the red curtain will gently get darker and go into the black, sort of like in a theater when the lights go down. And now we move the title over to the black because it's more natural for the curtain to fade and then the title to be shown on the screen. Now we finish up by selecting uh, the title portion over the black frame and then the title is ready to type and we type in what we want the title my dog Katie now the title looks a little bit too small and from the drop down menu uh, we select the largest size which is number nine and by the way these numbers have nothing to do with the point sizes in word processing or desktop publishing programs. We select Done in the drop-down menu. Then in the Viewer menu, we select Done there, and voila, we're all done. Okay, thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and I hope you found it interesting, and you can see the other tutorials on my website.